So today I want to give an update on both this. This is the open joystick project I've been working on and also the CNC machine. So a lot of people asking uh, if this one is, this project's dead and it's not, it's just uh, I've kind of gotten as far as I can go with 3D printed material and what I'd like to do is try and continue this with some aluminum milled parts and let me just see if I can balance the camera here. So like this does work. Let's see if I can do it on the camera. So all the cams and and everything. It's hard to like kind of keep still. So yeah, so we got the cams up there, and then we have this one up here. Uh, but the major problem I've ran into with 3D printed material is because it all shrinks and changes shape, no matter what, uh, after, like in your design, uh, for instance, I'm using SolidWorks, like I've profiled this cam shape perfectly, but because when it's 3D printed, it deforms and stuff, a lot of times you get stuff such as this happening. And uh, not sure exactly what part of the uh, curve is changing but it tends to happen on every single angle so down here you can see there and then also this one actually doesn't but yeah like this this worked pretty good for a prototype also like you know elastic bands is as far as you can really get with the 3D printed stuff, um, trying to 3D print uh, small assemblies that can hold like high, I don't know what you call high weighted uh, springs is kind of very difficult. Um, but yeah, on, on a CNC machine and aluminum it would be a lot easier. So yeah, so that's where that thing is. Um, I'm going to continue this after the uh, machine is CNC machine is is uh, finished and functioning, and uh, but overall this works pretty good. Um, this part here uh, for sensors and whatnot. So like sensors, you'd have a sensor here, magnetic sensor, one there. Both of those you can put them on the other side. The one up here. Um, this piece here that is squished together, uh, this would be part of your grip, and then the magnetic sensor would would come through a shaft, so you can see like the, the top of this thing is moving, but then the the inner part and the inner circle is part of the this this part here. So you can you can get the difference uh, on a magnetic sensor and get the rotation of that. And uh, yeah, that's how that would work. Um, so for the CNC machine, I have replaced this uh, bottom aluminum piece with a steel piece that is a lot more accurate. And do I have my? There we go. So these are the old ones. This is, uh, I think it's, it's off by a degree. I think it's. It's coming out this way by a degree, so that's no good. Um, when I was running it, I had to shim everything, and it was, from what I could tell, it was adding some binding, so that's fixed now. And then also, this piece here went up here, and this was really, uh, it was really just like a real bad design flaw because, uh, let me see if I can find the wood piece here. So originally, this was all that was holding it together. So this piece would go in like that, and it, you really couldn't cut anything really thick. Like I was kind of limited to, like I didn't want to try and attempt to cut aluminum on this. So uh, I 
have since fixed that, and I'm using the uh, the stock uh, 3D printed uh, motor mount for the Z-axis, and it just leaves a lot more material to hold everything together. And then the uh, faceplate here is it's basically the same same design as the aluminum one, but it's just been milled out on the machine and it's also a lot thicker. So this is 18 millimeters thick. And uh, yeah, that's where that thing is. So the, the next uh, thing I'm running into on the CNC machine is I'm losing accuracy. I don't know if it's steps or let's see if I can get a, so you can see here, let's see if I can get the ruler out here. So the hole on the left, which was made by this here, and all I'm doing is just poking it into the tape. Hole on the left is uh, G54, zeroed out, and then every single hole after that is after running some G-code. And you can see that the holes are all very equally spaced out. And what I've done is swapped out the X and the Z stepper motor drivers and well you can even see here I thought it was noise so I used some tinfoil and did a crazy thing to sort of isolate uh, the signal uh, cables going from the Mesa card because they're going underneath all this stuff and uh, and then the the white cables are going out to the stepper motors and uh, I checked it all with the oscilloscope and Everything was good anyway, and, and the tinfoil made absolutely no difference. And the noise, uh, yeah, they're just not that great drivers. The noise I was finding uh, only went away when I um, killed a breaker on the drivers themselves, and then they cleaned up. So, that's where we are with that. Um, After swapping out the drivers, the x-axis got a lot better, and then now I'm, I noticed that uh, one of the y-axis, so the y's are one's there and one's there. One of these motors, uh, or both of them, are, are slipping up. Not certainly not as much as the x, but it is very apparent and it is also quite consistent. So. Yeah, all, all of my drivers are no good, and uh, I have a solution that I'm going to do uh, and take care of all that stuff, but I'll leave that to another video. I've started setting up the uh, G-code and everything for a touch-off plate, and currently this is all wired in, and uh, it goes to the Mesa card. And uh, the way this thing works is there's four wires coming out, and four wires go to two switches so once you find which wires go to each switch you're good to go and there's no polarity so you don't got to worry about wiring in and backwards and the top one I'm not going to be able I don't have the probe thing set up but very minimal travel is enough to trigger that and then uh, if I push it down all the way I have that set up on my e-stop uh, e-stop latch component in in HAL and Linux CNC. So if I zoom in, and I'm just gonna press this, you can, let me uh, zoom out a little, like that. So when I press this in, there we go, the ESOP is triggered. Unfortunately, the ESOP trigger is right at the very, very bottom of travel. So if uh, you're actually driving the tool into this thing quickly, you're still going to damage the tool. So um, when I was testing it out on this thing, I did dent the uh, the end of this thing. I've since cleaned it up, but something to watch out for if you're using these things. You got you to gotta go down uh, slowly. So after rebuilding the head, uh, things are moving a lot more easily, uh, both the bearing blocks. Uh, and also cleaned up a little bit of slop here and this is all running a lot better. And then on the I haven't really 
done anything on the uh, both the uh, Y axes? <laughs> But I think they're fine. They're not. They're not slipping enough to be a problem. But the the uh, the problems with the drivers are really the the biggest concern right now. For a short amount of time, I did have uh, tap water in my spindle, and uh, I've since moved over to antifreeze, and that's just in this pocket down here. Nice uh, green color. And uh, what I think I'm gonna do in the future is like this is really a temporary solution. And I don't really want a bucket of antifreeze slowly evaporating away like this. It's probably not very healthy either. Uh, what I'll probably do is set up a closed loop system and uh, probably a radiator and uh, just cool it, cool it that way, something smaller. I might even see if I can put it on top of the, uh, on top of the head like behind it might be an idea so that's about it for this video if you want to know more about the joystick gimbal I'll leave the, uh, the URL to the github page with all the uh, information and CAD files for that um, as I work on the aluminum one I'll, I'm gonna stick with uh, all the bearings and, and all that and, uh, yeah, so if you do like end up printing this thing or, or getting uh, bearings to, to build this thing and in the future you want to build something out of aluminum like this, uh, that's not going to change. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.